Every item on the planet today has a story, from the watch on your wrist to the shoes on your feet. Motor vehicles, like humans, have a long and illustrious history with a narrative that began four centuries ago. None of the high-tech vehicles we know and love today were invented in a single day. We've created a timeline that covers a brief history of automotive advancement since its inception. We've sectioned the timeline into the most important milestones in the evolution of what we now know as the modern car. Steam and electric power and the earliest vehicles. You might be startled to learn that electric vehicles are not a novel invention. As much as Tesla fans love their battery-powered beasts, the king of modern electric cars was not even close to being the first electric car. In the late 1700s, steam propelled the first vehicles. It was an energy source used to power trains for many years, but steam power did not become more practical for small vehicles until the 1870s. Despite progress, there were still numerous flaws with the technology. Steam-powered cars required a long time to start up and had a limited range. Following that, inventors all across the world began creating electric-powered buggies in the early 1800s. A few decades later, inventors in England and France designed vehicles far closer to modern-day EVs. The first electric automobile in the United States was created by William Morrison in 1887. The car had a top speed of 14 miles per hour and a seating capacity of six persons. While this kind of performance certainly wouldn't turn heads today, at the time, this invention sparked curiosity throughout America. Anytime a revolutionary technology hits the markets, research, innovation, and competition all start booming. But no one would have imagined that in the span of just 10 years, one third of all automobiles in the United States would be electric. Electric vehicles were popular because they were easier to start than steam and gas combustion engines and did not require complex gear shifting technology. The original electric vehicles were silent and did not create odorous air pollution as the gas-powered cars of today. Meanwhile, Ferdinand Porsche was cooking something of his own, something revolutionary in 1898. He invented the first hybrid vehicle that ran on electricity and gasoline. It was a blueprint for the hybrids built more than 100 years later. But for the time being, a different type of engine was about to rule the world of automobiles. Internal Combustion Engine the creation of the external combustion engine, or steam engine, was a considerable triumph. Still, it was not genuinely regarded as the future of automobiles at the time. The brothers Niasafor and Claude Nieps built a prototype of the internal combustion engine which they termed Pyreolefor in 1807. The combustion process in an internal combustion engine uses two or more components to produce energy such as gasoline and air. However, after the innovation, they installed their engine in a boat and not a car. Coincidentally, in the same year, a Swiss inventor by the name of Francois Isaac de Rivaux created his version of the internal combustion engine. The critical difference between Niepce's and Rivaux's versions of the engine is that the former utilizes a mixture of lycopodium powder, finely crushed coal dust, and resin combined with oil to produce energy. On the other hand, Rivaux's engine employed a mix of hydrogen and oxygen. Unfortunately, both engines did not have a long run of success due to power issues during longer runs. But little did they know that another great inventor was already on his journey to solving their problems. Carl Benz and DMG's Ascension Carl Friedrich Benz, born in 1844 in Germany, is widely regarded as the inventor of the modern automobile. Carl Benz established the company Benz and C in 1883. In 1885 to 86, he created his first operational motor car, Motorwagen, a feat that earned him a German patent in January 1886. The Motorwagen is known to be the world's first practical automobile powered by an internal combustion engine. Aside from Benz's work on the internal combustion engine, he also constructed the first ever flat engine, known as the Boxer Motor in 1896. It had a horizontally opposed piston a design in which the matching pistons reach the upper center simultaneously, balancing each other with momentum. Many automobile manufacturers, including Porsche and Subaru, and some high-performance engines, particularly racing cars, continue to use the sophisticated design. Carl Benz then went on to develop a series of racing cars in 1899. In the late 1880s, two additional German engineers, Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach joined the race and established the renowned Daimler Motor and Gesselschaft, 
DMG, in Cannstatt, Germany. DMG created their first significant engine, dubbed Phoenix, in 1894, with the help of Wilhelm Maybach as the chief designer. What made the Phoenix rise above other technology was the engine's four vertically and parallel oriented cylinders, camshaft operated exhaust valves, and a spray nozzle carburetor. When Gottlieb Daimler died in the year 1900, his partner Wilhelm Maybach carried on with his work and designed a new engine in 1902. The engine is now considered to be legendary. The Mercedes engine was named after Emil Jelinek Mercedes, a European automobile entrepreneur working with DMG. This new engine was a success, to say the least. Maybach remained the principal designer at DMG until he departed in 1909 to form Maybach Motorenbau GmbH. In 1921, he designed a car which he named after himself, the Maybach W3 model. In 1926, Benz merged with DMG to create Daimler-Benz, now known as Mercedes-Benz. Today, Maybach is a part of Mercedes-Benz, a car that represents wealth, comfort, and the height of luxury vehicles. Wilhelm Maybach worked tirelessly at his company until 1929 and passed away the same year, at the age of 83. The Henry Ford Era So far, we know that Carl Benz, Wilhelm Maybach, and Daimler were excellent inventors. Their creations may be considered the first significant step toward modern automobiles. However, at the time, cars were very expensive and were meant primarily for the rich. Someone had to figure out a way to make them more affordable for the average middle-class family. Along came a young man named Henry who entered the automobile manufacturing scene and revolutionized not just car manufacturing, but large-scale production across the board, forever. Henry Ford was a young farm boy from a poor family born in Michigan on July 30, 1863. By the age 40, he founded Ford Motor Company. Henry was a staunch advocate of mass production and is single-handedly responsible for the revolution of the entire automobile industry through the assembly line method. But let's back up a bit. In 1891, Ford began his profession as an engineer. After repeated attempts to use gasoline engines, he eventually succeeded in developing the Ford Quadricycle, a self-propelled vehicle. Henry Ford and his associate and one of the first Ford employees, Harold Wills, worked for several years to design and build a 26-horsepower car in 1901. For context, a modern-day Toyota Corolla, while not exactly known for performance, still manages to pack about 140 horsepower. Still, for the earliest 20th century, 26 horsepower was their equivalent of a Bugatti. The success of the Ford Quadricycle brought the company attention from many large firms and corporations. Partners of the Detroit automobile firm sponsored Ford. They formed a company named Henry Ford Company with Henry Ford as its principal engineer. However, Ford wasn't exactly the order-taking type. He liked to do things his own way, and who can blame him? He quit the company the following year due to disagreements. Following his departure, the corporation was renamed Cadillac Automobile Company. Meanwhile, Henry Ford and Alexander Y. Malcolmson incorporated the Ford Motor Company on June 16, 1903. In just a few years, they were about to release one of the most well-known cars of the early 20th century, Ford Model T. The Ford Model T debuted in October 1908, while the car features were remarkable, which brought in tremendous attention and popularity, Ford also launched a new marketing idea for their cars. Henry Ford ensured that every newspaper contained articles and advertisements regarding his product. He established a network of local dealers who made the automobile a household name in every city in North America. He even targeted the highest level of clients, primarily farmers. In addition to that, in 1913, Ford introduced an assembly belt in his plants allowing for a significant boost in output. By 1918, Model T's accounted for half of all vehicles on American roadways. Henry Ford was able to bring down the production cost of cars enough to make them affordable for most middle-class American families. A truly remarkable feat. While Ford had an eye for efficiency and quality, perhaps giving customers the ability to order customized cars wasn't at the top of his list. He famously wrote in his autobiography, any customer can have a car painted any color that he wants, so long as it is black. Modern and Postmodern Era 
Many automobile companies went out of business throughout the world wars. Just a few companies were able to maintain their market positions despite the damage. Following World War II, car design underwent a significant shift, adopting a new Ponton style. The Soviet GAZ M20 Pobeda in 1946 and the British Standard Vanguard in 1947 were the first cars to adopt the styling. General Motors and Cadillac launched a high compression V8 engine in America in 1949. As automotive technology advanced in the 1950s, design became increasingly complicated and artistic. With mass manufacturing came new features such as speedometers, seat belts, windshields and rear view mirrors. Even after the first car with electric windows and air conditioning, the first turn signals were not fitted to a vehicle until Buick did it in 1939. Then came cruise control, car keys, power steering, the first air conditioner in a car, three-point seat belts, and heated seats. Safety features were also incorporated into vehicle designs. Oldsmobile, a division of General Motors at the time, put the first passenger airbag in their Tornado model in 1973. In 1998, the federal government mandated that all passenger vehicles be equipped with dual frontal airbags, keyless entry systems, power doors and windows, sunroofs and CD players became standard features in the late 1980s and early 1990s. This was the time when sophisticated technology was a huge selling point. It was a fad. American Motors debuted their new compact sized Rambler vehicle. As the market climate shifted in the 1960s, American-based firms began to face competition from foreign countries with the increase of imported cars from Europe and Japan. The success of American Motors compelled Ford and GM to manufacture compact, elegant automobiles, ushering in a new era. The following trend also introduced the muscle car period to the United States. The usage of new technologically advanced equipment and innovations like NSU's Wankel engine, gas turbine and turbocharger were introduced in the 1960s. Among the significant innovations are independent suspensions and enhanced fuel injection systems which became prevalent in the 1980s. BMW and Saab were the first to use these improvements in their automobiles, but Chrysler, now known as Stellantis, popularized them in the 1980s. By the end of the 20th century, the United States lost its lead position in the automobile industry. Vehicles were being mass-produced in Asia, East Europe, and other countries, and then Japan broke through to become the world leader in car production. The auto industry experienced several new technological changes in the 21st century. Standardization, platform sharing, and computer-aided design are all in high demand these days. The body styles of cars can also have changed dramatically in the postmodern age. The hatchback, sedan, and sport utility vehicle designs currently dominate the global market. The evolution of automobiles through the eras was more than just technological advancement. It revolutionized the way our world works and played a pivotal role in modern day consumerism. Thank you for spending some time with us today. If you found this video interesting, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get access to more exciting videos just like this. Till next time.